Alright. We have today a Wi-Fi CCTV camera from TP-Link, called Tapo C211. This can record up to 2K resolution, using its 3 megapixels lens, which is also capable of night vision up to 30 feet away. It can pan 360 degrees left and right, and can also tilt 114 degrees up and down. It can detect a person, motion and even a baby crying, and you have the option to push all these detections as a notifications to your phone. There's also a good motion tracking here, where when the camera detects a movement, it will follow that moving person around focusing it to the center of the recording. I'll show how good this is later. The C211 has built-in speaker and microphone, so we can also talk two-way here. There's also a privacy mode, where in just one tap, you can pause all recordings, to give you time to do whatever you want to do in front of the camera. We have a technical support number here in the box, which is nice. There's device sharing, where you can share the device to multiple cell phones, and have multiple people view and control it. The C211 also integrates with Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa, if you want to add it to your smart home devices, and control it through voice commands. Of course it also has a built-in Wi-Fi, but only the 2.4 GHz band only. There's no 5 GHz band here. The box and packaging looks really good and presentable. I got this for 1,300 Philippine pesos from Shopee. You can find the product link from the video description below if you are interested. We have an egg tray type of case here inside. We have the warranty and license information here. And they are kind enough to include a drill guide if you are mounting the camera. And we have the quick start guide document here, for mounting the camera, product information, setup, and stuffs. We then have the power brick here. It is not a USB type, but a cylindrical DC connector which is fixed and attached to the power adapter. The power cable is 3 meters long, which I think is enough length for most people. This plugs into the normal 220 volt sockets. We also have the plate here which you can use for mounting the C211 camera. And we have the camera itself here, in a nice semi-textured black color. The power source is located at the back. We have the camera and tape logo in front, and at the back we have the regulatory logos and information, and of course, this is also where we will attach the mounting plate. And if I'm right, just below the camera sphere itself, we will see the micro SD card slot along with the reset button. By the way, this camera can read up to 512 megabytes of micro SD cards. And that's the specs overview and unboxing. This is a really nice looking Wi-Fi camera. Now let's move to my phone so we can set up the Tapo application. Okay. The easiest way to install the Tapo app is to scan this box's QR code, which will take you to the Tapo app in the Play Store. But let's do the traditional way. Let's go to the Play Store, then search for Tapo. You will see TP-Link Tapo, just install that. Once installed, open it. Of course we will need to accept the terms and conditions. It's up to you if you want to check and join the user experience program, but for me, I'll skip that. Then let's tap continue. Now, we will need to log in using a TP-Link account. If you have one, you can use that. Otherwise, you will need to create one. It's the usual steps. Just register your email address, set your preferred password. Then a verification email will be sent to you. You just need to tap the link from the email to activate your account, and you're ready to log in using your new registered TP-Link account. After logging in, you will need to give the Tapo app the permissions it needs. Then you can choose a theme, either light, dark, or just follow the system theme. And we are in. Let's go to the Home tab. Then let's go to the All Devices. From here you can tap Add Device to add our C211 camera. Let's tap on Indoors Camera. Then let's select the model of our camera, which is C211. Now it's time to power on our camera. Let me just plug this in. OK. As you can see the infrared sensors and the LED indicator is on now. LED is a steady red. In the app, it says that we need to wait for about 30 seconds, and the LED will be an alternate blinking red and green. It's blinking red now. Let's wait for it to be red and green. There we go. It's alternate red and green now. Let's tap next. Then tap enable to allow the Tapo app permission to our phone's location. Tap next again. The camera is moving by itself now. When it boots up, it always pan 360 degrees and then tilt up and down, so that's normal. Now we need to connect to the device. The camera is generating its own Wi-Fi network, which is where we'll need to connect. Alright. We are connected. Now we need to select the Wi-Fi network in our home which will be used by the camera. So make sure that you select the Wi-Fi nearest to where you'll place the camera. After selecting, you will need to input the password of the Wi-Fi, which will be saved into the camera. After that, you will then need to change your phone's Wi-Fi connection. You will need to connect to the same Wi-Fi network that you have selected earlier for the camera. Basically, the phone and the camera needs to be on the same Wi-Fi network connection. Let's try again to establish the connection between the phone and the camera. There we go. 
Now we can set the name of the camera. Whatever you want. Then select or enter a place where you'll put the camera. Now select an icon for the camera. Now you have an option here if you want to view the details on how to mount the camera. Or you can just tap sounds good to go to the next page. TP-Link also offers a cloud service where you can save all your recordings. It's up to you if you want to subscribe to that, but for me, I'll skip. Some few more reminders here for storage and firmware updates. Just tap the button below the screen to continue. Okay. The camera is now here, listed in the devices. And before we go further with the Tapo application setup, don't forget to insert the micro SD card where the recordings will be saved. As mentioned earlier, the card slot is located in the bottom part of the camera lens sphere. Just gently tilt the lens upward to see it and insert the micro SD card as you would on laptops or card readers. Do note that micro SD card is not included in the package. You need to buy your own card. And you will need to reboot the camera after inserting the card as it is not plug and play. After rebooting the camera, go back to your phone's Tapo app, then open the device. Tap the gear icon at the top right corner of the screen. Then go to storage and recording. If the card is new, you will see here that it is marked as unformatted. Tap that. Then tap on initialize. This will now format the micro SD card and make it suitable for the Tapo C211 usage. Format complete. We can now turn on the loop recording. And when we go back, you will see that the micro SD card is now marked as good and we can enable the card recording. When you go to recording schedule, you can set here the time and day when you want the recording to happen. And you can also choose if you only want to record a detection, which is the yellow blocks, or do a continuous recording which is the blue block. Just tap the edit in the top right corner. Then choose whatever schedule and recording mode you want. Once done, just tap the check icon in the top right corner. I've set mine to continuous recording all the time. That's it. We're all set for the micro SD card recording. When we go back to the device homepage, you can tap the playback and download option here. You will be able to see all the recordings here. There's nothing yet for now as we're only just started the recording. One recording usually consists of 3 to 5 minutes footage. A few minutes after I have set up the connection between the camera and my phone, I received a notification for firmware update. I just tapped install of course, and this is how it will look like while it is updating. Make sure that you are within the same Wi-Fi network as the camera, and that connection is good while updating the firmware. You can do other things while waiting for it to finish. And when you want to check, just open the device, then tap the gear icon again, and tap on firmware update below. There we go. Firmware has been updated. Alright. Just to highlight the basic and most used functionalities of the C211 camera here. During the first time you open your device in the list, there will be highlights of features presented to you. Just swipe through them. Then there will be several tips pop up as well. Just swipe through them again. Here we go. We can now see the live feed from the camera, which is maybe how we're going to use this Tapo app 98% of the time. Just viewing the camera's feed. I am very far from the router right now, so the live feed might not be that responsive. But this is basically how you'll view the live feed of the camera. Another thing that you'll probably use the most here is the pan and tilt function. You can just tap on that. Then from here, just tap the arrow where you want the camera to point. Here we go. As you can see here, the camera is very responsive. It perfectly pans and tilt depending on what arrow I press from my cell phone. Again, the live feed is not that great as I'm very far from the router now. The third and last one that I think will be very useful for everyone is the talk function here. Just tap the microphone icon, it will open this page with a larger blue microphone icon. If you want to talk, you just need to tap and hold the microphone icon while you are speaking. This is how you'll communicate with the person beside the camera if you are away. This makes a two-way communication possible. Let's now test the motion tracking of the C211. But first let's make sure that it is enabled. In the Tapo app, open the camera. Then tap the gear icon at the top right corner to open device settings. Then let's tap the detection block here. And from here, tap motion tracking. Make sure that this is enabled so that the C211 camera will start the tracking any motion it sees. Now that it's enabled, let's see how it looks. Here we go. As you can see it centers itself to where the motion is detected. And it can do that easily since it can rotate side to side and tilt up and down without a problem. I have to note though that if you move really fast, it will not be able to follow you anymore. And also if it is following you and it sees other motions, like leaves of a plant being blown by the wind, it will focus on that instead of you, since the leaves are constantly moving with the wind. And the best thing I like here is, if the camera does not detect any motion for 30 seconds, it will automatically go back to its default angle of view, which is really great. Let's now do a quick overview of the Tapo, so that you'll have an idea on the things that you can do with it. At the top left corner you can expand my home and open the home settings. 
From here you can edit the name of the currently set up home, see the number of active devices you have, as well as the rooms you have set up. At the top right corner you will see a bell icon, which is the notifications. Beside the bell icon is a plus icon, which you can use to add a new device, or a new home group. The tabs here are basically filters for the devices you have, for favorites, all devices, and the rooms. The burger menu lets you choose between list of grid view, and also enables you to open the room settings. At the bottom tabs, we have the home, which is where we are currently. Then the cameras, which lets you view all the cameras. But we only have one now, so there's only one here. You can also select a preset detection mode here between home mode and away mode. Away mode basically enables all detections, including motion, person and crying baby. While home mode is more moderate. You can customize its settings as well if you like. The next tabs for vacuum and smart are basically for other TP-Link smart home devices, so we're not going to delve to that further. The last tab, called me, is just for the account, about the devices, and other boring stuff, so I'll skip that as well, and let you explore that on your own. Let's jump to the device block here in the middle of the screen instead. When we tap that, we will go to this screen, where at the top, you will see the live recording. From the icons just below the recording, you can take a screenshot, record the recording in your phone directly, adjust the microphone volume, or activate the voice call, which is basically the same as the talk function I've shown earlier. From here you can also pan and tilt as well, as I've also shown earlier. You can also toggle the alarm and privacy mode from here. When we go to playback and download, you will be able to browse through the videos recorded, either from the micro SD or from the cloud if you are subscribed to that. All recordings here can be downloaded to your phones, and all of those downloaded videos will appear in the download tab. The gear icon at the top right corner will open the settings specific to the device you're currently looking at. From here you can set the detection modes. You can toggle motion tracking, motion detection, person detection and baby crying detection. All enabled detections here will appear in the notification. You can also toggle the alarm here, in case you want the camera to sound the alarm if it detects anything. In the pan and tilt, you can set how many degrees the camera will move on each press of the arrows, and you can also perform a pan and tilt correction here. PapoCare is the TP-Link cloud service, so you can subscribe or ignore that. Storage and recording is where you can format the micro SD card, toggle if you want to record on that card, and if you want to include the sound in the recording. From here you can also set the schedule of the recording. Video and display will let you set the video quality, which can be up to 2K resolution. I have invert image enabled here since I got my camera set up mounted on the ceiling, and it's upside down. You can also set privacy zone here, or the area where the camera will not record. You can set the display in the recording from here as well, with choices of date and time, a text, or a logo. And I don't know what this display tag on screen is. If you know, do let me know in the comments below. Going back, you can also toggle the status LED in the camera as well, to show or turn it off. You also have the Wi-Fi signal strength here. And a toggle for a privacy mode, which when turned on, all recordings will stop. A toggle for notification is also here. I would suggest that you leave the advanced settings as is, especially if you don't know all these technical stuffs that's in here, like me. For the share device, I will go into that later, in details. All the rest here are mostly for administrative paperworks and software update stuffs, which are all self-explanatory and no need to explore them in this video. Alright. Some of you might ask, what if my phone is connected to a different Wi-Fi network than the one where the C211 camera is connected to? So here's a special chapter in the video to answer that. As you can see, my phone is now connected to a Converge Wi-Fi, while my C211 camera was set up to connect to our PLDT Wi-Fi network. And as you can see here, I can still view the live feed of the camera C211, and I can also do all of the controls, like microphone volume, panning, tilting, and everything. So it doesn't matter what network your phone is connected to, as long as you and the camera is online, you can control it anytime and anywhere. Now to the last chapter of the video, which is setting up other phones to control the same C211 camera. First, from the first phone you've set up, which is my Galaxy S23 phone, open the Tapo app, then open the device, and tap the gear icon in the top right corner to open the device settings. Let's then scroll down and find the share device menu. Then let's tap the share icon at the bottom of the screen. There will be a notification here that the account where you shared the device will have limited access rights to some functionalities, which for me is a good feature to limit other users on the device settings. Now, you just need to type in the email address of the person you want to invite. Of course, this email address should be the one signed up to TP-Link. 
from the other phone, which is my OnePlus 7T Pro, where I have already set up the Tapo app and have signed up using the email address I sent the invite to. Inside the Tapo app, you should see a notification from the bell icon at the top right corner, with a red dot, indicating there is an unread notification for you. When we tap that, you will see the invite sent from the other account. We can just open that notification, then tap accept. OK. Success. Now, the main gate is listed in this phone's device list. You can now open it from this phone and do all the common functionalities on it, except updating the device settings, as those can only be updated by the main account from the Galaxy S23. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nova Air.